Killing zombies. No, no, no. They are Zeds, not zombies, you fool. Do your research. All right, Zeds. They are freaky creatures and they deserve to get their brains blown to bits. Does that sound good to you? Well, then Killing Floor is definitely a game for you. Killing Floor 2 is the follow-up to Killing Floor 1. Surprise, I know. I personally got interested in the Killing Floor games after playing the first one, which I got for free of the Humble Bundle. I played Killing Floor 1 with a good friend of mine and we were instantly hooked. But I'm not here to talk about Killing Floor 1. It's a good game, don't get me wrong, but the spotlight certainly goes to Killing Floor 2. At first glance, Killing Floor 2 might look like a Left 4 Dead ripoff, but the real fans will know that Killing Floor 1 existed before Left 4 Dead. Killing Floor 2 is still different though. In Left 4 Dead you start at one end of the map and you end up at the other one. In Killing Floor 2 you just have one map, some big, some small, and some actually have different stages. You earn dash aka money for killing zom- Zeds that you will be able to spend at a pre-selected buy pod that is located somewhere around the map. There is a crazy amount of weapons in this game and they range from simple firearms to crazy machinery. If you want to prepare yourself in the best possible way, you want to stick to your class selected weaponry. Because yeah, in Killing Floor there are classes. There are 10 in total and there's definitely something for everybody. From sword wielding maniacs to power engineers to your favorite gun slinging pistol wielding mother trucker. You can also select one of the many customizable characters that each come with their own cheesy lines. That makes me feel like John Wayne! Cold beer, I'd hit a spot. Even if you're into unlocking rare clothing items or even buying more characters, it'll be here for you. And then there is the game modes. There is multiple to choose from, but fan favorite is definitely the traditional survival mode, where you either play four, seven, or ten waves, which will end up in a boss fight against one of the four bosses. There is the Patriarch, Dr. Hans Folter, King Fleshbound, and the Abomination. Another game mode is the Endless mode, that is still fairly new. This, as the title says, goes on endlessly until you die. In this mode, the bosses will still show up, but they are much weaker. Unless that is if you're in a crazy high wave, of course. The final mode is the weekly mode that gets updated every week. This mode plays like the survival mode, but you can unlock items by finishing that week's challenge. And trust me, those challenges are really difficult. I have to give a lot of credit to Tripwire Interactive. This game has been in early access since April 2015 for PC, and it fully released in November 2016, adding the title to PS4 and Xbox One 2. And yet, it is still well supported to this day. When I, for instance, launched the game after not playing it for a while, I was baffled by the fact that I was facing a boss that I've never seen before. Me being me, however, of course beat the shit out of him. But not only the free content deserves credibility, the game also runs like a pack of... Butter? I run this game on a GTX 760 and it runs 1080p ultra no biggie and even when I go up to 1440p it still holds up surprisingly well. The game runs on a heavily modified Unreal 3 engine that is barely the Unreal 3 engine anymore. A cool feature for instance is the blood that will never disappear throughout a match thanks to their self-made texturing mechanic. If you ever felt like painting a room red with blood, you're more than welcome to do so in this game. And if you're not into gore, there is a setting to reduce it. Bringing me to the rest of the settings menu because there is a lot. Oh, and look at my keyboard and mouse when the wave starts. Time's up. Go kill some Zeds. That's awesome. Like I said at the start of this spotlight, I played Killing Floor 1 with a good friend of mine. And it did not take very long till we both got Killing Floor 2, because playing this game multiplayer might be one of the most enjoyable multiplayer moments I've ever had. A good thing to know, however, is that the difficulty dynamically changes depending on how many players you are playing with. If you join a bunch of randoms, for instance, the game will dynamically scale and spawn more Zeds, and it will make the bosses even more challenging. Killing Floor is an amazing game, and I could shoot Zeds all day with the awesome soundtrack and the amazing weapons. Killing Floor is without a doubt on my favorite games list, and with the support it still gets, it will most likely hold strong on that list. I hope to see you return in tomorrow's Spotlight livestream where I will play this game. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like and let me know what you think about this game in the comments below. My name is Kiwi and I hope all of y'all have a good one. Bye.